episode 342, I showed you how to set up a Rails application with the Postgres database. Now one thing I love about Postgres is that it can take on the responsibility of other things which often require a background process, such as managing a job queue. Now here I have a Rails application which is already set up with Postgres, and this application is designed to send out newsletters, and I can choose to deliver a newsletter by clicking on this link. Now this takes a while to process. You can see our application hasn't responded yet, and during this time the Rails instance will be unable to process other requests. So it's a good idea to move long running tasks into the background process whenever possible. You can see I finally got the response here, it said it delivered, and shows the status here. Here I'm going to solve this problem using the Q Classic gem. This makes it easy to take a long running task like this and move it into a background process which is managed using Postgres. Now, I'm going to be demonstrating version 2 here, which is currently on release candidate 12. Hopefully a final release will be out shortly. Now, this readme provides some instructions on setting it up in a Rails application, so I'll follow that roughly here to set this up. First, I'll go into the gem file for this application, and at the bottom here, I'll add the Q Classic gem. And then I'll need to specify the version, which is 200RC12. Now, it is important to specify the version number here because it is a pre-release. So now just run the bundle command to install the gem. Next, I'm going to load in the rake tasks by going under my lib directory and under the tasks directory here. I'll make a new file called qclassic.rake and then paste in uh, these two lines like it shows in the readme. And then going into the config directory, I'll make a new initializer here called qclassic.rb. So this is where we can specify the qclassic configuration, which is done through environment variables uh, like this. So that way it's fully compatible with Heroku. Now I'm just going to adjust this to fit this application. I don't need to specify the username and password here on my local system, but I do need to specify the database name, which is mailer uh, underscore development here. Now you might want to move this into some kind of external configuration so you can easily adjust it for different environments. Next, we need to create a migration to set up the database. Now the readme shows this all happening in a single migration file, but I found it necessary to split this up into two separate migrations because of the way transactions work. So I'll generate two migrations here, uh, one called add Q Classic, and then another called uh, setup Q Classic, like this. Now in the first migration, I'm going to paste in this code, which creates the job queue table and adds an index. And then in the second migration, I'll paste in this code to load in the Q Classic functions. And now we can run rakedb migrate to run those migrations. And it looks like it worked. And then next, I'll start up the background worker process by calling rake qc work. Now if all goes well, I shouldn't see any output here. Now I'm going to experiment with this in another tab in the Rails console. Now to add a job to the queue, call qc.nq and then you can pass in the method call you want to trigger, such as puts, and then whatever arguments you want to pass into this method call after this. So uh, let's say uh, hello world here to pass that in, and then added that to the queue, and on the left side, it printed it out here. Now what's going on behind the scenes here is that when we call nq, it's going to serialize these arguments into JSON format, and then pass it to the queue's table, which is then processed by the worker. Now the JSON format serialization is pretty picky, and it's important to keep the arguments you're passing in here as simple as possible. It doesn't even like symbols, so if we pass in a, a symbol into here, maybe a hash, it's going to raise an exception. So it's important to always use strings instead, so I can say message as a string hash, and that will work and properly print it out on the queue. And there it is, there's our hash printed out, so just be careful on what arguments you pass in to that NQ method. All right, so let's go back to this application and make it so when we click on deliver newsletter, that long process happens in the background. Now when that link is clicked, it's going to trigger this deliver action in the newsletter's controller. And so this will just fetch that given newsletter and then sleep for 10 seconds to simulate a long newsletter delivery and then update that delivered at attribute with the current time so that it shows that it's delivered. Now whenever I have a long running task like this in the controller, I like to move it into the model and a class method to simplify the interface as much as possible. So in this case, I'm going to make a class method on the newsletter model called deliver, and then just pass that ID into it. So now I just need to go into that newsletter model and define a class method in here called deliver and have it take that ID parameter. And I'll just paste in the code I had in the controller and have this use that ID parameter passed in. And I no longer need to call this on the newsletter class because I'm in that class at the moment. 
and that's it. All right, now that this has moved into a class method on the model, it's very easy to move this off into our background process by calling qc.nq, and then just passing newsletter.deliver in as the uh, method we want to call, and then passing our parameter ID into it. So now we just want to say delivering newsletter instead of saying that it's already delivered. So let's try this out. Now when I click on deliver newsletter, I get the response back instantly, but the newsletter is not yet delivered because it's processing in the background. So I'll just wait a little while and then hit reload here. And now it shows that the newsletter has been delivered. It works. Now what happens when a job fails and an exception gets raised while it is processing? Well, I'll add an exception here and try it out. Now when I click on deliver newsletter, it says it's delivering, but it's going to hit an exception when it tries to process it in the background worker. And then if I check out the worker process, you can see the failure is mentioned there. So be sure to log this output when you're using the worker in production. Now by default, Q Classic doesn't try to do anything fancy such as automatically retry the job. If you check out the worker class and the source code, you can see there's a method in here called handle failure, and which is just printing out that output. But it expects you to override this if you want to handle failure in another way. And if you check out the readme, an example is shown here how you can subclass a worker and handle the failure differently. Now there's a lot of other great information in this readme, such as an example on how to set up a worker executable file instead of using the rake task. So the advantage of this is that you can control exactly what gets loaded. So if you don't need your entire Rails application loaded in for your worker, you can skip that and save on memory. Another neat feature mentioned here is the ability to listen to job notifications. So this way, if a job is added to the queue, your worker can be notified instantly of it and start processing it immediately instead of waiting for the database pulling. So this might play a part in choosing Queue Classic over some other queuing solutions. Well, there's a lot of other goodies in this documentation, so be sure to check this out for more details. So the final question is, how does Queue Classic stack up to the many other queuing solutions? Well, it's probably closest to delayed job, which is also backed by the database, but Queue Classic takes better advantage of Postgres's features, and it also doesn't require active record, so you can really minimize the worker process. Now as for the other options like Rescue and RabbitMQ and Beanstalk, those all require a separate daemon process to manage the queue. So if you want to keep your server setup simple, this is a great way to go. Now one thing I didn't see in Queue Classic is some kind of web interface like Rescue provides. If someone wants to port that over, that'd be awesome. Well, that wraps up this episode on Queue Classic. Thanks for watching. In the pro episode this week, I show you how to use HStore to add schemaless data to Postgres. This allows you to add persistent attributes to your model dynamically without creating database columns. To watch that episode and all other pro and revised episodes, just head on over to railscast.com pro and then sign up there for just $9 per month.